Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is Casey and I am the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company Pattern Scout. I am very, very passionate about sewing my own clothing. And if I'm being honest, I'm a little obsessed. <laughs> Today's project was inspired by these very drapey, romantic wrap blouses that I found on Pinterest. And I did a little poll in my Instagram stories last week and you guys voted for this project. And I was secretly hoping you would because I really, really wanted to make this blouse. So thank you for voting and thank you for confirming my bias. Um, anyway, when I was doing research for this project, I also found this jacket that I just loved and I ended up making a second garment using a similar drafting technique. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you that project and just tell you what I did to modify the pattern. If you want to try it for yourself, if you're feeling a little bit adventurous after making this blouse. So to start, I'll show you how to draft this really easy pattern using a bodice sloper or just a really well-fitting top as a starting point. Then I'll walk you through every step of construction. And at the very end of this video, of course, I'll have to reveal and show you both garments that I made using this technique. I've put links in the description below to additional resources that I've mentioned in this tutorial. And if you enjoy this video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And that way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to be using my bodice sloper as a starting point for drafting this blouse. I have a Skillshare class on drafting bodice slopers. If you'd like to try it for yourself, there's a link in the description below to that class. And it'll just show you a basic method for measuring yourself and creating a bodice sloper and then drafting that on the computer. I'll also show you how to create printing templates so that you can print this at home or you can print it with a copy shop. You could also use a shirt that you have that you like the fit of, something that fits kind of close and is sleeveless or has a shoulder seam that is right at the tip of your shoulder. That could be used just as well too. You just want something that has a very basic, well-fitting bodice structure that you can use as a starting point. Starting with the front bodice, you're going to mark a point that is about a half inch or one centimeter up from the shoulder point. And then you're gonna draw a line from the neckline at the shoulder seam out to that point. Next, measure down about four and a half inches or 12 centimeters from the waistline and draw a line that is parallel to the waistline. Extend that line just about two inches beyond the side seam. Now just extend that shoulder seam line to create the sleeve length. I made mine about nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. Now square a line down from the sleeve length line and that is gonna be the sleeve opening. And I just made mine 13 inches or 33 centimeters long. Then draw a curved line that connects from the bottom of the sleeve to the side seam. And you want this line to be squared at both the sleeve and the side seam. The shape of your curve is not really an exact science. It's a little bit of trial and error. And I actually drew mine a little bit generous here, um, in addition to the side seam and the sleeve length and sleeve size, because I wanna be able to try this on and customize the fit later. Once you have the basic front bodice structure drafted, you can use that to create the back bodice. And I've just mirrored this over on top of the back bodice. And the only thing that I'm changing about this is I'm creating a new neckline at the back bodice neckline that's a little bit higher. And you can just set the back bodice aside for now. To create the wrap edge of the front bodice, you're going to again mirror that piece over so that we know how wide the entire front bodice pieces together will be. And then you'll just draft a curved line that extends from the shoulder point at the neckline down to about the halfway point of the kind of horizontal dimension there of the other side. And the reason that I'm not going all the way to the side seam is because since this is so loose, I want to give myself a little bit of extra space there for cinching the waist and not having those ties be constricted at the side seam. And that curved line stops at the waistline and I just drew a line straight down to the hem of the garment. Now you have your front wrap bodice and the back bodice drafted. For this pattern, we're also going to be creating facings. So I just created about a two inch facing for both the wrap front and the back neckline. And you'll see where these arrows are pointing. I've drafted the facing just a little bit short on the outer edge, about an eighth of an inch short of the seam there. And that's just going to help pull the facings taut and keep things a little bit more smooth. Now you have all of your pattern pieces drafted and 
you just need to add some seam allowance. And for this pattern, I've added about 3 8 inch or a centimeter of seam allowance. And for the back facing and the back bodice, you don't need seam allowance on the center seam because those pieces will be cut on the fold. Okay, now we're ready to make our garment. Since I drafted this on the computer, I just created a printing template, like I mentioned before, that I also show you in that Skillshare class. And I've taped all of my pieces together and I am now cutting out the pattern pieces. So I've got the back bodice, the front bodice with the wrap edge, and then the facings. And the ties will just be two strips of fabric that we'll cut later. The fabric I'm using for this project is a lightweight rayon that I picked up from D&H Fabrics Co. And I just loved this daisy print. I'm providing a little extra length on the sleeve and at the bottom hem because I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of length to play around with. Now the back bodice is complete, I can move to the front bodice. And I did the same thing, added a little bit of length to the sleeves and the bottom. And you'll see here I have two pieces mirrored for that front wrap bodice. And I cut into the selvage a little bit here, but that's okay, it'll be folded under. I also cut out two of the front wrap facings mirrored and I cut one of the back facing on the fold. I also need to interface the facings, so I've got a really lightweight fusible interfacing for this. Instead of fusing this directly to the facings, I'm first going to sew the interfacing to the facing right sides together. And when I say right sides, I just mean that the non-fusible side of the interfacing is gonna to be to the right side of the fabric. And I'm just pinning along that outer edge there. I'm going to do the same thing for the back neck facing. Again, sewing along that outer edge. For this project, I'm using a really fine Microtex needle. You could just use a really fine needle. You don't have to use Microtex, but that's just what I had. Now I'm just sewing along the outer edge of each of the facing pieces to attach the interfacing with a quarter inch seam allowance. I've done this to each of the facings and you can see there's the wrong side and the two right sides are together. I'm just going to kind of finger press the interfacing away from the facing and I'm going to flip everything right side out and now I'm going to adhere the interfacing to the facings. The end result is a really nice and neat facing edge and that raw edge is concealed now on the interior. I'm doing this for all of the facings. Now with right sides together, I'm going to attach the front wrap facings to the back neck facing. I've pinned both sides at the shoulder seam and made sure that those folded edges are matching up and that the raw edges are in the interior. And I'm going to sew those with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. After that, I will press those seams open. And I want to take this moment to apologize for my shaky camera. I am still figuring out my setup for filming YouTube videos. <laughs> Next, I'm just gonna clip the corners there just so those aren't poking out. We can set the facings aside for now. Next, sew the front and back bodice pieces together at the shoulder seam with a French seam. I'm aligning these pieces at the shoulder seam, first wrong sides together, because with a French seam, we're gonna sew one seam and then conceal that within another seam. I've got both shoulder seams pinned. I'm gonna do these at the same time. And the first seam for this French seam is gonna be a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm using a really small seam allowance on this particular project because of the weight of the fabric. Smaller seam allowances have a nicer finish with lightweight fabrics. Now I'm trimming that seam allowance in half to prepare it for the French seam. Again, this is a very tiny, tiny baby seam allowance, so I'm being very careful not to cut into the actual stitching, and you can see that up close here. Now I'm just going to press the seam allowance open on both shoulder seams. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get that seam pretty flat to prepare it for turning later. Here's how that looks a little bit close up. You can see my little tiny baby seam. And I'm going to turn the garment right sides together and press that seam back into a folded position to prepare it for sewing the other part of the French seam. Now that that's nice and flat, I can sew with an eighth inch seam allowance to conceal the raw edge from the first seam. Now that the shoulder seams are done, we can attach the facings. I am aligning the facing here right sides together with the neckline and the wrap edge. And first I'm going to connect it at the shoulder seams, make sure that's nice and lined up, and then I'll connect it at the bottom 
And then I'll just kind of go in between and make sure everything is evenly distributed and pin it all in place. Sometimes with these wrap edges, because it is cut on the bias, it is a little bit shiftier and it may seem like it's not gonna fit, but you can make it fit if you're patient. Now we're just gonna sew all around the edge there with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Again, you might notice as you're sewing this around that it seems like that facing edge doesn't want to line up with the edge of the wrap. It will line up and you can see here as I'm kind of pulling this through the sewing machine that it, it starts to kind of fall into place. And I'm using my hand to kind of keep those pieces flat and trying not to pull on one point of this as I pull it through the sewing machine. I'm trying to kind of push it through so that I'm not causing any warping. And I've done that all the way around. And once again, we're going to trim that seam allowance in half to reduce the bulk all the way around the facing edge there where we just sewed. And I'm using a rotary cutter here. I wanna caution you, if you're not as comfortable using a rotary cutter, I highly recommend using scissors because it is easy to kind of slip and cut into your garment, but I'm impatient <laughs> and stubborn. So I'm using a rotary cutter here and uh, it just gives a nicer, cleaner edge, but use with caution. And here's how that looks up close. Now I just want to press the facing away from the bodice. And while I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the seam allowance is also pressed away from the bodice, which you can see here. Because our next step is to understitch that seam allowance to the facing. We'll just use a really narrow edge stitch here along that seam. Understitching just encourages the facing to stay toward the interior of the garment. I'm getting as close to that seam line as possible with my edge stitching and I'm stitching on the facing side. Once you've edge stitched the entire facing, press that toward the interior of the garment. The facing will now want to lay really nicely on the interior of the garment. I've done that all the way around. That's a nice clean edge on the outside and it's still loose on the inside, but it is staying folded to the interior. And there's our little seam. That looks pretty good. Now we can move on to sewing the side seam and the sleeve seam. And that'll just be one continuous seam along that edge. But first I want to determine where that tie is gonna be on the front wrap edge because I'm gonna use that to create an opening in the side seam for the tie to go through over here. So I'll just measure where that wrap edge height is and mine was about six and three quarter inches and I will mark that on the right side seam when worn. And I'm making that opening about two inches wide. And when I sew my French seam, I'll be sure to skip over that opening in the side seam. I sewed the first seam of the French seams for the side seams. And before I finish the French seams, I just want to create my waist ties and install those to test the fit of the garment. So I've cut two strips of fabric that are about five inches wide by 50 inches long. And I'll fold those in half lengthwise, wrong sides together, and sew the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. When I get to the end, I'm gonna pivot and sew it at an angle. I'll also trim that seam allowance at the end of the tie. Before I turn the tie right side out, I am just going to press open the seam allowance here and that'll make it easier to press that flat after it's turned. And I'm using a pencil here just to turn everything right side out. And now I'll just press along the entire tie with that seam right along the edge. And since we pressed it open first, it'll lay nice and flat and crisp. Next, edge stitch along the seam side of the tie to keep everything nicely folded in place. And I'll do the same thing for the opposite tie. Now I'm going to attach that tie to the bodice and I'm aligning the raw edge of the tie with the raw edge of the front of the wrap. And I've positioned that right underneath that facing and pinned it just so I could fold it over. And then I'm gonna repin it once the facing is on top so that it'll sandwich that tie between the facing and the bodice edge. Then I can take this over to the sewing machine and sew that 
facing down on top with a 3 8 inch or one centimeter seam allowance to secure that tie in the end of the facing there. And I'm just grading my seams here. I'm only grading the facing edge and the tie, the raw edge of the tie there, and I'm gonna leave the edge of the bodice seam allowance as it is. And now we can flip this right side out and pull the tie out and the end is really nicely concealed in there. So I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to press that whole assembly flat. And now I can turn that straight edge under by about a quarter inch to create a baby hem there and finish off that side. Then I can just top stitch that down to make a nice neat edge. And I'll do the same thing for the opposite tie on the opposite side of the front bodice. Okay, so before I finished sewing the side seams, I just wanted to try this on and make sure that I was happy with the way that it was draping and the size of the sleeves. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is storming mightily right now in Lansing. Um, anyway, after trying it on, I feel like the sleeves are a little too big, so I think I'm actually gonna bring that curve up a few inches, maybe two inches actually, just a couple of inches up and straight out just to make that sleeve a little bit closer to the bust line so that um, it's just not coming straight from the waist. And I might actually take in the side seam about a half inch to an inch um, because I feel like I'm getting a lot of extra blousing in the back that I don't really need. And I think that will be closer to the silhouette that I want for this blouse. And I made the sleeves extra long. I'm actually gonna create a wide hem on the sleeves there. So they'll come up a couple of inches anyway. And then I think we'll be pretty close. Okay. I measured two inches at the sleeve and tapered that to an inch at the side seam and just redrafted that curve there. Now I can continue with my French seams and I've again trimmed the seam allowance down but on the right side of the bodice I did not trim the seam allowance at the opening because I'm going to use that to turn later. And I'm pressing the seam allowance open here just like I did for the shoulder seams. And here you can see where I've turned under that seam allowance for the opening up for the tie. And again, I flipped the bodice right sides together and I'm pressing that seam flat. And here is that opening on the right side of the bodice. I just top stitched down those little folds that I created. And I'm gonna take this over to the machine and sew an eighth inch seam allowance to conceal that first seam allowance, making sure to skip over that hole. And there's no opening in the left side of the bodice, so I'm just sewing that continuously with that eighth inch seam allowance to finish those French seams. Now that I have the side seams sewn and the facings installed and the ties installed, I just wanna to top stitch my facing down to the bodice. And you don't have to do this, but in the inspiration image, it looked like they had top stitched the facings down and I liked the way that looked for this particular style of garment. And if you don't wanna top stitch your facings down, you will definitely just want to tack them down at the shoulder seams just to make sure that they don't pop out. Another thing I'll note here is that I use several pins to keep the spacing flat along that neckline edge because it is more prone to bunching up if you're not careful. So I'm just going really slow, even though I've got it sped up here and I'm making sure that it lays nice and flat. For the left side of the bodice, I am creating a little belt loop to hold that tie because the tie will be on the exterior when you wrap it around your body. So I just cut out a little piece of fabric that's about an inch wide by about two and a half inches long and I am just pressing some folds in that, pressing it in half to conceal all of those raw edges. And then I'll just top stitch the edge there to hold it in place. After doing that, I pinned it to the side seam right on top of the seam at the same location that I have the opening on the opposite side seam. And I'm just top stitching both the top and the bottom of that little belt loop in place. This will hold the tie at the waistline and keep it from slipping down and becoming uncomfortable. And heck yeah, it is time to hem the blouse. I'm just trimming all my extra little threads that popped out. And for the bottom of the blouse, I'm doing a narrow quarter inch hem. And I'll do that along the entire bottom edge. And then for the sleeves, I'm doing a wide hem at one inch. And I ended up turning this up by one inch two times to create the sleeve hem. And I'm using my seam gauge to make sure that that stays at one inch on both sleeves. And that brings us to the reveal, yeah. Game change, flying by in real time.
am just so tickled with how this blouse turned out. And like I mentioned before, I created a second garment in a medium weight linen fabric that I picked up at Seams Fabric. For this version, instead of a facing, I installed a collar around the entire wrap edge and neckline. The belt is also separate from the bodice and I only extended the front wrap edge about two to three inches beyond the center front of the bodice. I also raised the underarm curve another two inches and extended the sleeve length and finished those off with cuffs. And I added pockets to give it a more utilitarian vibe like the inspiration jacket. This is such a great starter project if you're interested in drafting your own patterns. It's very easy to draft, very easy to sew, very easy to customize the fit as you go along. It's, it's a great little pattern. And I hope I've shown you some ways that you can modify that into totally different styles just by changing a few small details or changing the fabric type. And that is why I love sewing my own clothing so much. The possibilities are truly endless. And if you learn a few basic techniques, you can really make yourself anything. It is very exciting anyway. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up, tell a friend about it. And uh, yeah, check the description below for all the links that I mentioned. And also if there's something that you would like to see me make, be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Bye. Very easy to sew, very easy to modify the fit on the fly as you go. I feel like I just made a wrap. Um.